Good afternoon, everyone. I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. Last night on September 14th, 2025, the night sky came alive with one of nature's most breathtaking spectacles, the Northern Lights or the Aurora Borealis. If you were lucky enough to catch a glimpse, perhaps in the northern United States, Canada, I also heard reports from Texas. Wisconsin, Illinois, and I even have a video here from the Netherlands or Norway. Um, it's beautiful. If you were lucky enough to catch a glimpse, perhaps in the northern United States, Canada, or even further south, and you witness this rare dance of colors, painting the heavens in green, purples, and reds. But what caused the dazzling display? And why should we be paying closer attention, especially with the Earth's magnetic field weakening? I'm going to expose the science behind last night's auroras, the ongoing decline of our planet's protective shield, and the chilling lesson from the Carrington event, a solar storm that could happen again. First, I'm going to talk about what you may have seen last night. The northern lights are caused by solar activity. The sun ejects massive bursts of charged particles called coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. When these particles reach Earth, they interact with our atmosphere, exciting gases like oxygen and nitrogen, which glow in vibrant colors. There was also sprites that were reported um, seen last night because of this. Yeah, the sprites were really colorful. Recent forecast from NORA predicted geomagnetic storm from a cannonball solar storm, a fast-moving CME, overtaking a slower one. So there was two, sparking auroras as far south of, as Illinois and even parts of the Midwest. Yeah, I heard Texas, but I haven't been able to see or find some images to show you from Texas. But this wasn't a random light show. It is a sign of heightened solar activity during the current solar cycle, peaking sometime later this year. But here is where it gets concerning. Our planet's magnetic field, the invisible force that funnels these particles towards the poles and creates the aurora, is weakening. Over the past 200 years, Earth's magnetic field has lost about 9% of its strength globally with even more dramatic drops in the South Atlantic anomaly, a vast weak spot stretching from Africa to South, Af to South Africa. I've talked about this and showed images about this in the past. Different electronic equipment is influenced, impacted when it flies over that area, so they try not to fly over that area of the South Atlantic anomaly. The increase in radiation, yeah, just devastates all the electronics. And even if people fly over, airlines fly over the area, yeah, they'll get a massive dose of radiation. This field generated by swirling molten iron in the Earth's core acts like a shield against solar winds and cosmic radiation. As it weakens, more particles can penetrate deeper into our atmosphere, potentially intensifying auroras like last night. Yeah, and they're getting more and more frequent, aren't they? This event also poses risks. Satellites already glitch in the anomaly. And if the trend continues, we could see increased radiation exposure for astronauts, disruption to power grids, and even health effects like higher mutation rates during uh, past weakenings as seen in the uh, Last Champs excursion 41,000 years ago. This weakening, it's part of a natural cycle, including the potential polar shift reversal that happens every few hundred thousand years. Yeah, we know it's coming again. 
But in our tech-dependent world, it's alarming. Even the Carrington event, the most powerful solar storm in recorded history, which struck on September 1st through the 2nd, 1859. British astronomer Richard Carrington spotted the massive solar flare, a sudden explosion on the sun's surface, followed by a CME that raced to the Earth in just 17 hours. When it hit, the geomagnetic storm was off the charts. Auroras lit up the skies worldwide, visible as far south as Cuba, Hawaii, and even near the equator. People in the Rocky Mountains read newspapers by the glow at midnight. Telegraph systems sparked and caught fire. Operators were shocked by electricity surging through the wires. It was chaos, but in 1859, society relied on simple tech. Imagine today, a Carrington event level could even black out power grids across continents, fry satellites, halt GPS and disrupt communications for weeks or months. It could even fry out the uh, power stations. Yeah, and they could be without power for years. Most of our uh, substations, the power stations, are not made here in the United States anymore, um, but overseas in Asia, China. Estimates suggest trillions of economic damage with modern infrastructure far more vulnerable, especially with our weakening magnetic shield offering less protection. Scientists say the odds of another one in the next decades are low, but rising with solar maxima and our field's decline could amplify the impacts. So what does last night's northern lights tell us? It's a beautiful reminder of the sun's power, but also a warning. As our magnetic field weakens, events like the Carrington could become more disruptive. Agencies like NOAA are monitoring closely with satellites like Swarm and the World Magnetic Model. They track changes. But for now, enjoy the auroras, but stay informed and always be prepared. Space weather affects us all. Thank you for watching. If you saw the northern lights last night, uh, share your photos. And remember, the universe is full of wonders and risks. Stay curious and always be prepared. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.